God bless you. So today we're going to be doing a study, as we always do. So today, let us open our Bibles and keep studying. Keep praying for one another. Keep praising God. Keep focusing on all that He teaches, praying for the Holy Spirit to work in you, guide you and strengthen you. Let that Holy Spirit lead you in what is the will of God. It's us when we come to surrender of ourselves to God. Holding back is what has been our error. When we are still too conformed to the world and don't know how to release all those worries and all those things to seek the mind of Christ. But God's will work in us to live in love, to live as Jesus lived. To follow all that he taught. To love one another as yourself and what it is to actually love and not what the world tells you love is. For the world is a deceiver. But Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And through everything he went through, <clears throat> through every part of his suffering, through his hardship, through the mocking, the scoffing, the plucking of the beard, the crucifying, all of it. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. No animosity, no anger, no hatred towards anyone. He knew where the lost are going. And he said it was far better to remove the part of you that would cause you to sin than for your whole body to be cast into hell. For that was the seriousness of sin. And when we start to look at sin and our sin and all the things we do, can we justify them before God? And it's looking for that mind of Christ to lead us away from all those unjust things. So let's look at love and all that Jesus brings. Let's start with Romans chapter 13. And we shall begin in verse 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So, do you remember when Jesus said, we're even to think with hate in your heart was the same as murder itself. To even look with lust was the same as committing adultery itself. And it's about that mindset. Well, I didn't do the deed. Yeah, I might have looked, but I didn't partake. It's that mindset that needs to be looked at. What is the mind of Christ? It's not just, well, I haven't killed anyone. It's, I don't even have the desire of any dislike, ill will towards anyone. No anger nor wrath towards someone else. To love them, for I know where they're going. And I know what's going to become of them if they do not come to Christ. And it's in that love that though they may mock and though they may scourge us, with all due haste, To desperately share the gospel with them. So they don't take that path of eternal fire. Where the worm does not die. And the fire is never quenched. As with the rich man and Lazarus. And he was in agonies and torment. And it's an agony and a torment that does not end. A fire that does not consume because it's not quenched. So it purposely always burns. But never consumes what it burns. That's why he's in torment. That's why he's in agony. It's not consuming him, though it burns. Though it's agony, it does not destroy. It is perpetual. It is a warning. So those where it's like, ah, you shall not bear false witness. Even the idea to tell a lie would be beyond just, oh, well, I shouldn't do it because it's wrong. It would terrify you because it disgusts you. Because you know how bad it is to lie. For who are in the lake of fire? For all liars have their place. Not some, not the odd one, depending on, but all liars. 
So it's always seeking that mind of Christ. <clears throat> now as we continue through. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. So it's like, it's time to figure this out. It's time to get right. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And that's the thing. All these things, if we're doing them, they're the works of darkness. They're not the works of light. For light shines bright. And the things done in the shadows wish not to be known. Because light will shine upon them and show what wickedness has been done. And that's what it is, to seek the light, to walk in it, to live as it, to be the light as God is light, for he leads us in the dark. But we do not conform to darkness, nor walk in it, and leave it, ah, my heart. <clears throat> and as I was saying, excuse that, and as I was saying, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armour of light. Walk in the light, let Christ fill your heart, and let him strengthen you. Do not concern yourselves with the wickedness of this world. Take no part of darkness. Instead, expose it. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He will try and tempt you. But you know right from wrong as Christ guides you and the Holy Spirit that works through you will lead you into all truth. Pray, seek, you find, knock, the door be answered, ask. You shall receive, God, am I doing what's right? Am I on the wrong path? Am I living in lust? Am I doing these things? Guide me that I may know. And that's the thing. Ask. Always ask. We come to him as little children. We are willing to learn. So be as obedient children learning from the Father. And Jesus is the template. Because Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. So look at all he did. Walk as Christ. So let us walk properly as in the day. Not in revelry and drunkenness. Not in lewdness and lust. Not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. And the flesh is always going to be lusting. That don't end. The devil will always try and give you something. Something to tempt you and that's resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. You see something you're struggling with. Oh, why am I all of a sudden focused on this? This doesn't seem right. God guide me. What is this? Ask. Always look. Look at Jesus. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The mind of Christ. Now... What is love? To live in love, to walk in love. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus did everything. He was selfless. And he had nowhere to lay his head. He didn't do it for reward nor wealth of the world. He did everything out of love and compassion. He was compassionate upon the multitudes that had followed him. So he fed them. He saw the suffering of the lame and the sick, the blind and the ill, and he healed them. He healed on the Sabbath to do good because he had compassion, because he loved. And that's where we need to be, loving one another as ourselves. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, <clears throat> from verses 4 to 8. <clears throat> love suffers long and is kind love does not envy love does not parade itself is not puffed up does not behave rudely does not seek its own is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. 
walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. For the flesh is selfish, but the spirit seeks of above what is the will of God. To look to him to guide us and strengthen us. For God is love. Think about all the things we have done through these generations. Thousands of years have gone by. Wars have gone by. Mocking and scoffing has gone by. Murders and lying has gone by. Every sin under the sun has gone by. God has been long-suffering. With every wrongdoing we do, yet he is faithful and waiting for each one of us in our wrongdoing to be as the prodigal son, to realize the filth we're in. And to come back to him. And just like the father of the prodigal son. He welcomes us with open arms. Because he loves us. Though we be sinners he gave his son. That we may live. To come back to the father. If you know where you're falling short. Call out and cry out to him to deliver you. And he's there. Every step of the way. Now, in the fruits of the Spirit, let's go to Galatians. I'm going to go to chapter 5. <clears throat> and verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. We're all at different stages in our walk, in our understanding and in our learning. And it's that study, that continued journey with your father, leading you, like a toddler with your hand outstretched, clinging to God, as he leads you and brings you greater understanding. As you study ever diligently, seek you will find. Now to John chapter 12. I have a feeling I may have written this back to front. But we shall find out. So John chapter 12 verse 15. <clears throat> now in verse 15. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey colt. Donkey's colt. Ah, oh, blessed be the Lord. But yes, this is the incorrect verse. Here's 15.12. Apologies. I am man and I am fallible. And I have not been that well lately, so mistakes are increasing. But I am diligently working against it. So, John chapter 15, verse 12, as I did expect. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's a commandment. And I will not break it. So I pray, make me more compassionate. Make me more loving. Make me more kind. Make me more understanding and long-suffering. And I could walk as you would have me walk. Not as I do walk. That I look for the mind of Christ to work in me and strengthen me. That I can walk as the light. For Jesus is the light. And he lit this dark world. He gave hope to the destitute. May we all seek him and follow his example. Learn from him, for his yoke is light. 